Welcome to an exceptional edition of Rebellion's educational series. We're going to learn about Tractable AI, a very cool AI company that I've been hearing about from some of my smartest friends. And we have the pleasure of Alex Daliot. Is that the correct pronunciation, Alex? It is. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. The honor is all ours. So my, my lead question has to be, how does working in academia flow to the private sector? I mean, the work you did at the Imperial College of London, I thought was fascinating. And you worked with one of my favorite professors whose book I really enjoyed, Murray Shanahan. We're, you know, we're definitely gonna get you on any time to talk with professors on Grady Descent and CNNs, but today I wanna to learn about Tractable AI and, and tell us, how did, you, how did you go from academic to private sector? Yeah, so, um, it, it was a fascinating time to be at Imperial College in 2013-14 because it was a year after Alex Krzyzewski's paper uh, on ImageNet, right? The first time a, a confident was implemented on a GPU and that, that famous top five error rate on ImageNet image classification was brought down by 50 percentage points in one go, right? Which was kind of completely unheard of. And it was, it was fascinating because it was the time at which academia was still trying to absorb and accept that. So you would have professors and labs at Imperial, at Cambridge, still saying, what is this deep learning thing? What are these results? I don't even know if I like it. And it was an incredible moment to transition from econometrics to machine learning because I just came in, picked it up a little faster than those that were still stuck in their old handcrafted features ways. And, you know, within within a relatively short amount of time, able to make some modest contributions to the field. But the, the next fascinating point was 2015, where after two iterations of these ImageNet annual competitions, human performance was surpassed. So we went below the 5% error rate on image classification. And that told me this, tech is, this technology is ready for the real world. Let's leave academia and actually make this tech transform industries. No, I mean, you know, we both did work on, you know, plant image uh, classification. Really? And, and, the, and, the, and the issue is, you know, the, the background, you know, you have, it's a noisy background of this stuff. And so, you know, you have to overcome that. Um, but uh, attractable AI, you guys are taking images of accidents and coming up with like an immediate claim. So are you circumventing insurance? Are you circumventing... I mean, it, it seems like you're, you're circumventing a large part of the insurance industry. Right. So, yes. Yeah, so what, what we, we believe that um, when a road accident occurs or a natural disaster, such as the fires in California, the hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico, um, that when these events hit, recovery could be 10 times faster if you let the breakthroughs in image classification take care of assessing all the damage, figuring out the repair costs, unlocking the funds, identifying the right repairers, and immediately kicking off the process of sourcing materials to get everything back to normal. And today, that's what we're doing. So our, our technology is now in use by, so it's, it's not circumventing, but working with 20 of the world's top 100 uh, auto insurers wow. across 14 countries. So US, Canada, EU, all the way through to Japan and Thailand. And right now we're processing a run rate of 4 million auto accidents a year. And when typhoon season hits in Japan this year, uh, our solutions will help people secure money from their insurers, not within six months, but within a couple of weeks. So now what percentage of your day is on actual research versus you know, fundraising and client relations? You know, obviously, when you're at uh, I I ICL, you were 100% research about give or take. Where do you think it is today? Uh, unfortunately, that certainly dramatically drops. <laughs> I think within, you know, in your in, in my first year, 50% of my time was spent programming. Uh, I think you know, within by the end of year two, there's no programming anymore. By the end of year three and four, it's hard to even read more than like the top papers that are coming out in my case, because you're just, we're now 200 people. And so there's just so much related to onboarding a team, uh, growing go to market, growing the product team, building culture. Um, however, you know, now you, you take an approach of 
of at least making sure that you've got a world-class research team, that you're collaborating with the top labs, and that you know, when GPT-3 comes out, your, your teams are there, they're working with it and maybe making use of it. Wow, yeah. So what do you think is the future of practical AI? I mean, will you go beyond auto insurance? You know, can you do all types of insurance? And then from there. Yeah, so you know, one, one thing that's been relating to, to our future for us, and I think this is kind of getting into the, the hard reality of bringing an AI breakthrough to the real world is can you actually automate the task, right? Um, And then can you actually get it adopted and can you actually get it to drive huge value? Not, not just enough to justify its cost, but, but dramatic value to fulfill the, the the world excitement around AI. I think if you fail at any one of those steps and if too many companies that have raised a lot of funding fail at one of those steps, we go into another AI winter. And I think that's one of the things we're really proudest of at Tractable is, you know, we ensured to take an, yes. Well, I was going to say, your approach is one of the most efficient and useful approaches I've seen. I was like, this is a fantastic company. I just loved everything about what you guys were doing because it just, it's so useful and it makes sense. And I'm so happy to be seeing deep learning applied in such a, you know, a kind of good for society way. And so I guess beyond auto insurance, can you get into, I mean, what is the next segment from there? What is your vision beyond auto insurance? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so certainly uh, our first step is, is, Hey, anytime you have a financial decision regarding your vehicle and your vehicle for the vast majority of the world is your primary means of transport, right? It's what gives you mobility. And there's a lot of decisions that you're going to have to take relating to your vehicle, such as, you know, is, is my vehicle insured? Uh, is it financed? Right. Am I on a, am I, am I on credit with it at a loan? That's just too high for me. Um, am I insured well, so that if I have God forbid a terrible accident, I'm not, I'm not out of pocket. Um, does it need to be maintained because it's not working well and I need to pick up my kids and, and go to work. All of these decisions today. I love it they require a human expert to look at the vehicle and tell you, here's an insurance quote. Here's how much I'd buy your car for. Here's a loan I can give you. You need to change the suspension. You need to change the engines. And it would be 1,500 to get it repaired. That's hassle that with this image classification breakthrough will no longer be needed. You will no longer need appointments. You'll no longer need to take your car to an agent, to a dealership. You will take your phone out. And the visual intelligence working locally on your camera will produce price compared quotes for all of that. Uh, That's like absolutely just super cool. So there's this huge potential. I mean, are you going to add on maybe an augmented reality division as well? Possibly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now we're getting, yeah, now we're getting at some exciting detail. So today when you've had a crash on your car because of COVID, um, people are very uncomfortable about having an appraiser come and look at your vehicle to figure out what the claim payout is going to be. So insurance companies, 80% of the time today in America, ask you to take photos of your car. So you'll painstakingly take 12 photos, send them, and then typically an adjuster will look at that remotely from a desktop. You can A, automate this with AI so that it's immediate, but B, sometimes that data capturing process is difficult. You know, where is the vehicle identification number on my car? Sometimes it's stuck in some odd place, especially for imported vehicles. Um, wait a second. I, you know, the, the appraiser cannot tell if there's damage because they can't get close up and the resolution of the image is not good enough. Imagine if instead you've got augmented reality on your phone. It's making sense of where the car is. It is guiding you around the vehicle. It can tell there may be a minor scuff on the left door. It's asking you to step forward to get a close up, it's telling you where to find your VIN by displaying arrows on the screen. So the whole process is accurate and just takes 40 seconds. Wow, that's so cool. I, I just, I love this. Wow. Uh, now, the issue nope. with this as usual with, with augmented reality though is, is computationally so heavy, so expensive. Um, one thing for a long, you know, when you use Google Voice, 
your voice is actually going up to the cloud. The processing happens remotely uh, on the cloud and then the results come back, right? What we've actually noticed is there's starting to be some breakthroughs in compressing these convolutional neural networks so that they take up not a gigabyte of space, but um, in the tens or hundreds of megabytes of space, such that within a couple seconds, they can be working remotely, uh, locally, sorry, locally on your phone so that the speed of your internet bandwidth uh, is not a problem to have augmented reality run. And that's, that's actually a very important step stage that's happening at the moment. We have no idea what hundred billion dollar companies will come to be because of five G. You know, no, no, you know, when when four G came out, had everyone known Uber would have been Uber, we all would have invested in Uber. But uh, no, it, it's it's very exciting because you know augmented reality is really going to take off with uh, you know the five G network. So, uh, wow. So Alex, you've been one of the most interesting guests we've uh, really had on here a very long time. Very excited about Tractable AI. So before we let you go, is there anything else that you should add for our viewers? I think, um, you know, right now we are focused on the vehicle because one of the things that doesn't scale yet with image recognition is, is you, you have to build your algorithms to solve very narrow tasks. Uh, and, you know, we require hundreds of millions of images of vehicles in any kinds of condi visual conditions, uh, minor damage, severe damage, snowy day, rainy day, uh, glare, no glare. Um, and the question is, okay, well, if you're going to, if we're building the visual expert in your phone, that's going to help you for all well, things. How many people car, do you actually have devoted to just getting these images? I mean, you know, it just seems like such a, a top task. When Andrew Nagut, you know, in 2009 proved deep learning, he got all the images fed to him by you know, Google. It was so nice and easy for him. People forget that, you know, the data itself is, you know, accumulating the data is the top so this is what makes auto insurance fascinating because you have body shops and insurers. Body shops do the work, insurers pay. Insurers need to see an audit trail to justify the cost. So every year, billions of images of damaged vehicles are produced by appraisers and body shops and sent to insurers. So if you work with the insurers, you can access- What a great them. learning set. Oh my God, fantastic. Oh, this is great. You're, 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 you're going you're to kill it. So, uh, Alex, this has been a pleasure was all mine. Stay well, and I'm excited to watch uh, Tractable AI grow. I'm excited to have you back on with uh, you know, some fantastic CNN professor. So, would love uh, to. You stay safe in these crazy times, Alex. Thank you very much. Take